Good morning and welcome to Local Business Focus. I'm Sally Barker. Joining us on the show today is Peter Treneman from Group Support, proud station sponsor. Good, Good morning, Peter. Good morning, Sally. How are you? Oh, well, thank you. Excellent, excellent. Have you been keeping up with what we've been talking about? I'm just, just, I'm <laughs> keeping up with it, yes. It's not bamboozling you or anything like that. <laughs> no, 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 but I, I still, you know, I do need to be a bit more vigilant when I'm reminded that an update or, you know, I need to back up rather than Absolutely. remind me later. That's right, that's right. And we'll speak about backups <laughs> later on. Yes. Um, one of the things we have spoken about, and I'll just recap a few things, um, is the idea to actually have some attention to the detail of what you're doing within your business, um, keeping track of your finances, keeping track of where your money is going and the long-term views. And we spoke about track going to Peru mm -hmm. and the preparations you make for that. Are you making the same sort of preparations in your business? Um, today I want to go on more on the sort of the practical nature, and if you recall, um, some time ago we spoke about DNS and the internet, the um, web pages and those sort of things, name um, domain names. Um, today we're talking about the actual structure of the internet. Okay, now if you've been on hold to um, one of the uh, local um, ISPs, the internet service providers, um, one of their recordings on the on hold music used to be about how. Um, the internet came into being um, from the military in the US wanting to communicate with each other um, and expanding slowly to include civilians. Okay, um, Those civilians then uh, contaminated basically the mm -hmm. network and the military said, well, we're not going to play our games with the civilians in place. So they withdrew and created their own. So there are currently two internets. If right. you know. Okay, Th There's more than that now. Mm -hmm. Okay, So each, each of the... Um, the big secure networks and they, the people who can afford it have got their own networks and I suppose you, you're supposed to call it an internet but you know if you could afford your own and didn't want anybody else to see it touch it know about it you could create your own thing you know in secret um, and some people have done that okay. I'm sitting here thinking why would I want to do That's that right. but... <laughs> why? No. And, and for the normal person nobody wants to it's too hard and there's too much fun to be had and too much business to be made on the internet itself. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of dark side of the internet um, and part of that is the ability to pay, of people to go on the internet anonymously. Um, and what the um, authorities are trying to do and um, uh, so what the authorities are trying to do is trying to identify some of those people and, and I'm going to tell you a few things about how the internet works and you'll be able to see how some of that works. Okay. okay. So the starting point is a wire that goes between two places. Okay, Now the internet is based upon um, what everybody knows as the cloud. Whenever they draw the internet on a piece of paper, what do you draw? Well, yes. A cloud. A cloud. A cloud. And it's a, some sort of nebulous bubble where everything just goes in and things come out and you don't really care about what it is. So if you imagine a whole series of machines and they're not sitting side by side, they're sitting connected in different buildings around the world. Okay, if you go to Denver, it's a large complex there, it's three stories, it's underground, okay, and it contains literally thousands and thousands of servers. Now, if you imagine that your home PC could fit, as far as power and storage goes, um, could fit in inside a, a reasonable server, let's say 100 times. And I say 100 just because it's easy maths, it's 86 or 84 or something like that, depending upon the server. So let's say 100 because it's easy, and we'll take some off at the end to, to allow for that for the maths. Um, and let's say, you know, this, this center has, um, um, well, it has eight rows of racks, double sided, 24 deep, three floors off. Mm. Each rack has. Um, up to 16 servers in it, okay, plus cooling and electrical and all that sort of stuff. There's um, a large number of the machines there, a large amount of information. I, um, I haven't actually done maths on it. Um, someone on the internet probably has. If you Google it, you could probably find out. But um, we're talking of um, teraflops is, is the term we use for storage of that size. So we've got a megabyte, you know what a megabyte is, mm -hmm. you know, so the average song is three to four megabytes. Um, you've got a gigabyte, which is um, a thousand of those roughly, 
1,024 if we're being scientifically accurate, um, but 1,000 of those, um, and the average movie is 2 or 3 gig. Okay, then we've got a terabyte, which is a thousand gigabytes. Okay, so we've got um, hard drives and you know portable hard drives that are terabyte, and so they can fit your entire library of music and, and movies on it. Okay, then we go further, and I'm not going to bore you with the details, but you know up there at the top is something like a teraflop or something. Yeah. So anyway, there's a large number of machines, a large number of storage connected to each other, and that forms the internet. But how does your message get to the internet? So you're Googling how many teraflops on the internet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your message goes out the back of your machine into a little cable. And what happens is the message is actually split up into what's called packets. Now, if you imagine something like a mini semi trailer, okay, each semi trailer can only take a certain amount of information. So what happens is you have a controller. So the TCP IP, um, and I've just had a blank about what TCP IP means. It's um, Internet Protocol is the IP. I'll remember the other bit in a moment. <laughs> um, sorry, complete blank. Um, the um, the uh, the semi trailers go out each with their piece of information. So the message is spread up across these semi trailers, and to give you an idea, there might be a thousand packets in a question to Google about that. Okay, I don't know. Um, it dif differs with each machine and each each um, message. So there's a thousand packets gone out. They're all numbered, one to a thousand. The Google at the other end says I've received 997, so I'm missing three. So it sends a message back to say send resend the other three. So it resends the other three. Your machine resends the other three, and Google then has its thousand. It then opens all the packets puts them together, reads the message, and then does the same thing as it sends things back. Now you start to understand how fast machines work mm. if this is all happening in a blink of an eye. So you start getting some real power when you understand that changing the size of a semi-trailer means you've got, instead of a thousand packets, you've got 400 packets. Okay. Mm. So you've got a you, you reduce the number if you increase the size of your packet. And the packet size is um, measured uh, and um, calibrated by a, an acronym which says MTU, which is Maximum Transmissible Unit. Okay, um, it's a, it's the, the amount of information okay that can go on the internet in a packet out of your machine. Um, there's realistically the small and large packets for different reasons. Okay, and there's thousands of these packets going backwards and forwards. And so the idea is where do they go? How do they know where to go, where they get to? So as they go out of your computer, they're labeled with a number. And they're labeled with the number of the destination. Okay? They're also labeled with other destinations, which is the first port of call. So you're going to Albany from here, you might have to go to Fremantle first and then Albany. If you understand what I'm mm -hmm. saying, yes. so your packet on the front will have your number three of a thousand, Fremantle and Albany, being the route you're taking and your number. Okay, so it's all labelled. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and we'll talk about how to encrypt all that later on. But the idea is that at each point, we have what we call packet inspection, and what happens is that the routers around the world and the switches around the world look at these packets and say, ah, you're going to this place, okay? So the security comes in when you hide things in the packets and when you give false addresses. So you say, right, I, I want, actually want to go to Kalgoorlie, but I'm going to put Fremantle Kalgoorlie or Fremantle Albany. When I get just out of Fremantle, I'll change it. I'll change it to Kalgoorlie. It's all lots of, it's all very complicated and, and I'm not going to bore you with all those sort of details. I, I could and I can see your eyes glaze over a moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, but getting the message across is, is, is what I'm trying to do. The idea that um, the structure of the internet is actually physically sending information down the line in a box, in a packet. When you're using Wi-Fi and now you understand 
what's going on. When you use Wi-Fi, all those just go over the airwaves, okay? So it's a lot easier to capture one of those packets and read it. It's also a lot easier to lose them. One of the reasons Wi-Fi will never be as quick as cable is because of your loss factor. Okay. okay. Because you're not actually putting a current, you know, a, a small current or a, or, a, or a message down a wire that only has one place to go, which is the end of the wire. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. You're pushing it out into the ether, into the air. So it could go in 360 degrees. Okay. Well, it's 360 by 360, isn't it? If you imagine a ball, it's mm -hmm. not it's not a frisbee. It's a ball. Yeah. You know, we're talking about real world here. So. Um, there's a lot of things that we can do to make things easier, faster, quicker. Okay, but general rules, um, don't do anything you wouldn't do um, in the safety of your own home with the door closed on anything that's mobile. Don't do your banking on your mobile, okay? Um, it's still, your phone is still your most insecure device, wow. okay? So, I mean, you can do your, your banking on, on, your, on your laptop, Okay, but try not to do it in a public Wi-Fi area <laughs> because there's lots of people who have the ability around out there to actually read packets. And if they can program machines to read packets and put them together to get the message, then do you think they can make a machine to pretend to be the, the machine you're sending it to? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's realistic. You know, it's a bit like breaking in, but it's not. It's about. It's more like sending a message to your friend someone's intercepting. That's right, intercepting a ball. That's right. So, so, um, and you may have actually never know. They may actually be intercepting the ball and then keep passing it. So you never actually understand that it's got, not got to your destination. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the way the internet works. And there's a few errors and omissions there. So apologies to those people who are technically super <laughs> accurate and want me to sort of uh, um, retract things or, or, or say things where... Um, it's actually specifically accurate. It's the concept that I'm trying to get across. So is this where um, people can get your password? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so that's why um, quite often when you're transmitting passwords across Wi-Fi, okay, or across networks which are in public access, okay, you all do also all do always do that with some sort of encryption, some sort of security. And I'll, I'll mention security later on because there's lots of different layers, okay? But it's a bit like storing your password on a piece of paper that's written to, on the back of your phone. <laughs> Doesn't take much for someone to see it. Yes. And there are people who do that, by There way. are people who do that. You can tell by my laugh. I know someone who does that, yes. <laughs> That's a frank story for later, <laughs> That's isn't it? Excellent, story. excellent. Yes. Um, so one of the things that... Um, um, one of the things in the internet as a, as the things called ports and firewalls. Okay. Now, if you imagine a box of uh, pigeonholes, um, and each of the pigeonholes has a number. Okay. And the pigeonholes spread across an entire wall, and you can't get through from one room to the other without going through a pigeonhole. If you know, mm -hmm. it's a pretty sort of loose explanation, but mm -hmm. you get the idea. There's a grid you have to go through. Some people can only fit through certain boxes through certain pigeonholes, and other people can go through others. Um, you can't go through both because you're a packet. It's a physical thing, okay? You actually have to go through the firewall. So the idea is you block the firewall for everything except what you want to allow, okay? Yeah. And that's what a firewall does. It stops the packets traveling. It's, it's, it's a wall. It's, it's literally a wall they can't traverse. They can't pass through. So you number the ports, or all the ports are numbered, and so you direct the traffic to a specific port, and then what happens is that you get packet inspectors at firewalls inspecting the packets, a bit like the security people at an airport. They're searching everybody for the dangerous things. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. So it's a good illustration to use. We we could go on about a whole load of things mm -hmm. like that. I mean, and there's lots of movies. If you look at on on, the, on Google on the internet about uh, a movie called How the Internet Works. Okay. Okay. How the Internet Works. It's a movie made by universities and one of the universities in America, and it's very good. 
All right, well, we'll have to talk <laughs> in more detail another time, but we are out of time today. So thank you for joining us this morning on Local Business Focus. Peter Treneman from Group Support, proud station sponsor. Thanks for having me.